I've been seeing image hover effects like these all over the internet recently. This week, I finally tried to replicate some of them and interestingly, I managed to do that just by using an average image, JavaScript, and shaders. If you're new to shaders, imagine drawing a circle. If you fill it up with straight strokes, zigzags, or polka dots, you're basically shading it. Three of these image effects I've seen felt very unique. And even though they're very different effects, all of them are average images with average everyday styling that use a JavaScript library like 3.js, Pixie.js, or P5.js. I'm using 3.js, but before you panic, let me just say that it only needs 3.js to create a scene, a camera, a flat 2D plane mesh, the render, and the image itself as a texture for the mesh. That's it. All the magic happens in shaders. I started with vertex shaders to define the actual workspace or the UV map and pass it onto the fragment shaders that modify every single pixel on the map. Here's where these three effects part ways. So let's just start with this one. I always spend a good amount of time just looking at the effect. Like, what do we have here? Hmm, so when I hover on this image, the red, green, and blue color channels kind of separate and flicker. First, I sampled the existing texture and started the main function of this shader, copying the UV map and saving the base state. Then I needed to intensify everything after hovering, so I made a glitch intensity variable. If the glitch intensity is more than zero, it creates the glitch effect, and if it's zero, then it'll just show the base colors. This glitch effect is cool and all, but it's too simple. How about something more like this, with different segments each having its own variation of the glitch. So I divided the y-axis by 3, no, no, wait, actually 12. And then I tried randomizing, wait, I can't do that. Everything is kind of mapped already. Hold up, let me just get the book of shaders real quick. Mm-hmm, okay. Okay, so the formula I crafted all by myself here basically multiplies a bunch of arbitrary numbers to get a pseudo random value based on the segment and glitch intensity. I'll use it to get a random offset for each of the three glitch colors. For the actual animation, I just check if the mouse is hovering and if it is, I'll increase the glitch intensity in the shader by multiplying a random number by the intensity modifier. And if it's not hovering, I'll just set the intensity to zero. But wait, there's a little zooming effect too. Hmm, how do I... Oh well, what am I thinking? I'll just go to CSS, transform and scale up, transition 5 seconds, and ta-da! Sometimes the answer is just CSS, you know? Let's take a look at the next effect. It seems like the image is being pulled around by the cursor, but when it stops, it slowly moves back to the previous mouse position. Plus, the image is not being pulled around completely, but from these little grids, if you may, as if they multiplied all the points on the map and divided them again to scale down the effects. So every time you move over these pixels, the image gets dragged from the center of each pixel in the mouse direction toward the mouse position. But wait, when I move the mouse very slowly, the pull strength is much lower, which means the strength depends on the distance between each pixel and the mouse. So if the distance is long, more pixels will be affected, and if it's short, fewer pixels. In real life, this doesn't do anything for now until I invite JavaScript over and write some code to set up mouse positions for moving around, leaving the image, or entering it. Remember the color channels separating from the previous effect? They call this effect chromatic aberration. And it's here in this effect too. But this time, I'm adding pull strength as a factor, so when I'm moving around, the color offset slowly increases to 1 and decreases to 0 when I stop. Besides all of this, when I hover on the image, it goes from no saturation to saturated. I'll just apply a filter in CSS, and make it go from 0 to 100%. Like, wow, would you look at that? Okay, the last effect is interesting. It has the zoom in, the mouse follow, the increase in effect intensity, but with waves? How do we create waves? Okay, think, think, think. Oh, right, with sign. But what is sign? It's a, um, it's a math wave thing. So imagine this is our graph and we have a sine wave on it. We can increase the frequency by multiplying the x-axis by a number like 10 and make it slowly animate in time, react to mouse position, and have a certain intensity too. Hey, look at that. This is already pretty cool. But what if there were four waves? What if there were 10? What if... Okay, I'll stop. Now it's time for you to choose your fighter. Is it glitchy, wavy, or a distortion effect hitting the grid but you might ask, what can I even do with shaders? The best answer is, what can't you do with them? These effects are quickly growing in modern web design, and not just 3D, but 2D too. So let me know where your creativity takes you. And that's all for this video. If you liked it, make sure you do your magic down there, and see you on the next one.